Let's go. The Ace and TJ family presents Unfiltered, Uncensored, and Uninterrupted. Well, almost. Right here. Let's go. This is Share Funny from the Ace and TJ Show Plus. Well, hello. Alexis, do you think you're going to live to be 100? 100 years old? No. No? Mm -mm. How old do you think you will be when you you lie down for that eternal dirt nap? Uh, You want me to be honest? Yeah, what do you think? I think I'm going to die young. Really? How young? I feel like probably like... 45, 50. I don't why know do you why. Think that? I don't know. Don't, don't people in your family live to be really old? Yeah. Unless they get mm-hmm. buried alive. Unless they get buried alive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I, the reason is there's a story of a uh, of a really sweet great-grandmother who lived to be 99, and she's, um, I think, from Mexico, so she's uh, Hispanic, just like you. Uh, and she lived to be, like I said, 99, and her dying wish, or what her wish always was, has just come true that uh, on her grave, she wanted a five and a half foot tall, 600 pound penis statue. <laughs> what? So on her grave, she has a, <laughs> instead of having a normal headstone, she's got a giant penis statue on there. Her grandson said, uh, quote, she's always been very uh, avant-garde, very forward-thinking about things. Come on. I guess it's hard to for the grandson to just say, yeah, my grandmother was a whore. <laughs> I mean, or this is a prank from the grandson. He's like, oh, no, she would have wanted a yeah. yeah. big yeah. old thing on there. That's what she said on her deathbed. She really wanted a big penis. No, on nobody her. was here when she said it, but I heard it. She wanted BD energy on her. Yeah. <laughs> Man. And it's, uh, it's pink. And it's also got the testicles on it. Ew. Well, sure. Leave mm-hmm. that part the out. The whole of thing. Um, come on, Grandma. Make sure and, there's balls on it. <laughs> Um, it is, um, and I'm wondering though, if she designed it, like she wanted, uh, like picked out what it would look like. Or she just said, I wanted a a giant penis statue on my grave. Where's the writing? Where's the, where's the inscription? Um, I don't know. It's, it looks like kind of like a mausoleum. Oh, okay. Sort of thing is a little house around it. And the penis is on top of that little (laughs) thing. So it looks yeah, it looks like a, um, but I don't know. Maybe that's just what's built over her grave. Um, I love it. But. Do you find it real? Really, really? It appears to um, to uh, be a, um, it's what, why I'm asking about her design of it is because she, she must have said, I want it to be circumcised too. Because it clearly is. Oh, well, that's important. See, <laughs> but it doesn't and look like good craftsmanship. No. No. Does it look like good craftsmanship? Clapping. It's pretty shiny. Uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't pretty look like work. good work. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> look, what in the I'm, grandma? Grandma. Yeah, ninety nine. <laughs> Make sure there's a big penis on top with balls. No quiero muy grande. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> But everybody's happy though. Yeah, they they're all thrilled. clapping and yeah. cheering. They're just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how embarrassing. Yeah, to have to send your grandmother and great grandmother out at her funeral with it, with that on her grave at her wishes. And then this this guy, this must be the grandson standing yeah. up there giving a speech while it's covered with a with a big red you know cloth so he can mm-hmm. unveil it for everyone. Everyone, check out the huge. Penis. It's like, mm. <laughs> Look what me my wall. Yeah. What is that? Uh, that's. Yeah, it shows them bringing it in with a forklift. That's ridiculous. And what? It just. Are there no better statue makers than that, or is it would yeah. have been too expensive? To Probably have was a too real expensive. Statue made of it because yeah, it's it's pink and it's got a lot of, not a holes in it with. The craftsmanship is just not good. There's a holy D. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just weird. And 
trash. Oh my God. Grandma How funny would it be is. to put one of those on Ace's grave? Yeah. <laughs> I would. I would yeah. come. I would come back and haunt you then. Yeah. 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 I would come back and try to mm-hmm. ruin all of your lives. Yeah. <laughs> and is it that avant-garde to have just like a big penis? I mean, she avant-garde has, is like very. Yeah, like, yeah it's forward thinking, Regan. So what's forward thinking about that? Forward thinking is yeah. it's uh, you take something that's uh, that most people aren't looking at as as beauty, and then you. You kind of force it on them. Yeah. I wonder how many people are just going to be taking pictures with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you can throw that you know, avant garde around anything that's she stupid. Was very avant garde. And, gi- and give it a, an excuse. In other words, Granny was trashy. Yeah. Yeah. That outfit you're wearing today, nothing matches. It's so avant garde. Look, and <laughs> look, and I'm no prude. I think we've established that. But. Like this is not come on. People's other people go there to see their their uh, friends and family Mm -hmm. and visit, and they have their kids, and then they got this huge penis in the middle of the cemetery. You got to be. That's I don't know. Just you have to give some consideration to others. And think of it this way: if um, if Grandma would have been Grandpa. And he wanted the same thing. He wanted a, a big woman part, five feet tall on point. his grave. Would they grant his wishes? Would the cemetery allow that? Would Probably they be not. doing news stories about it, talking about how fun and great it is and how uh, avant-garde he is? Yeah, probably not. But he would be just as avant-garde. Mm. Hmm. 99, though. Good for her. Mm-hmm. And then that's also another way. She lived to be 99. She should be able to get whatever she wants. Her wishes. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Avant-garde is defined as, I wanted to look it up, new and unusual or experimental ideas, especially in the arts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where you take something that's not obvious. And yeah. Then, well, it's new mm-hmm. and unusual. There's well, no doubt okay, about there, that. Well, that's fair. It is new and unusual, but it's just, I don't know. <laughs> But is it art? Yeah. That's the thing. Is it, is art? it art? You tell somebody I got to swing by and visit my grandma's grave real quick. And <laughs> by the way, just so you know, when we pull up there, there's going to be a huge penis on top of it. She's in the penis grave. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's your grandmother. grandmother? Your grandma? wow. wow. Your grandmother no is the penis grave grandma. Yeah. She had a very uh, interesting sense of humor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you wouldn't want that on your grave, Alex? No. No. Because it's pink. Yeah. No, because I'm not going to have a penis <laughs> on my grave. <laughs> I'm not obsessed with it. And you know what? I bet it would. It's. Uh, it was probably difficult to find someone who does regular headstone work and all to, to do, do that. that. Yeah. So that's probably why you know a cousin or something yeah. probably had to do it. I didn't even think about that. Some real craftsmen wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Yeah, they're like, mm, no. Mm-mm. Can you make a penis? <laughs> And who and How all big? these people gathered around just to watch them unveil this thing? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's probably all of her family because yeah, she's be. you know she's ninety nine. She's probably got a hundred grandkids and thousand great grandkids. And... Hmm. But I mean, what happens if you don't if you don't um, get somebody's dying wish taken care of? You live with that disappointment the rest of your life. I mean. You're saddled with that disappointment. But shouldn't you be able to get to choose whether or not you think it's ridiculous yes, as to whether like, you carry it out? Totally. In this case, you should be able to say her dying wish was a, a, a penis on her as a memorial. So that's dumb. We're not doing that. Like if her dying wish had been to be spread along, the, her ashes spread along the Gulf Coast, yeah. we'll make that happen. But, but, but. You know, penis statue, that's just dumb. We're not doing that. Or her dying wish is for you to go back and marry the girl that she thought you should have married. And, yeah. And, but then that girl now is ugly. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You have to be reasonable with your dying wish. Your dying wish has to be fair to all parties involved. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, you better start working on yours, Alexis, if you think you're only going to live to 45. I know. <laughs> that's pretty dark. What would 45 be another 13 years for you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what in thirteen years I'll be sixty-seven. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it that long. What do you think is gonna take you out, Alexis? 
It's, I don't know, some type of early. accident. Car accident? Yeah. yeah. Don't be putting that out in the universe. I, I've always felt it, like, my whole life. I don't know why, and I have dreams all the time. Of what? She's not a great driver, so. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Dreams about what? Uh, of being car accident. Hmm. Wow. You'd think that would cause you to be an overly cautious driver. <laughs> yeah, hmm. I don't know why. I don't know what it is or why, but I, like, that's the recurring dreams that I have all of the time. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I probably mean you're going to live forever. Or you're going to live, like, a long life. Hmm. Or you're going to be a race car driver. Maybe. Someday. Yeah. yeah. Had that occurred late. to you? Yeah, no. It's not too late. That, makes you, that, that might be it. you're going to be a NASCAR driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> you need to go to somebody that interprets dreams. I'm sure you got somebody in that Rolodex that does that. <laughs> <laughs> All the wacky, wacky yeah. ass people, you know. Do you Surely. Think, do you think your dreams are manifesting something to happen? I don't know. Or maybe I like died in a car accident in a previous life. And that's, that's what I'm remembering. That was going to be my next guess. You yeah. know? <laughs> like that's probably what happened too. So I haven't mm -hmm. figured that out yet. Mm. Now who do you go to for that information? To find out what you what happened to you in a previous life? Uh, you go to a past life um, regressionist, I think they're called or okay. something. Okay. And uh, what's yours name? I don't have one. I oh. haven't done it yet. Okay. Daryl. So what do you have? You got <laughs> you got the uh, the Reiki lady. Yeah. You've got the um, you went you just that one call to the psychic or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Um, who is it that has the sound bowl? That's your therapist. Yeah, she right? has that sound bowl. Okay. What else do you have? Um, I know a girl that does tarot card readings oh, yeah, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Have you We're done so the friends. tarot? Yeah, we've done okay. the tarot. She's cool. I really like her. Yeah. So tarot, your uh, actual uh, doctor therapist mm -hmm. uses a sound bowl and, and some of those new age kind of things. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. And then the, the psychic Reiki. <laughs> now you got to find a regressionist. Yeah, past life. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Well, we in a regression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I need someone to, like, do my birth chart. What, what, is, what is that? Uh, depending on the time where that I was born and where I was born at and all of that, you mm -hmm. have like a whole birth chart that can tell you what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, the type of jobs you should try to be in, hmm. things like that. You don't already at your age know what your strengths and weaknesses are? Uh -uh. Hmm. So what if you did the birth chart and it told you that this is not the type of job you should be in? Would you quit or something? Uh, no, I mean, I wouldn't quit. I got to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> but you would immediately start looking for a I'll new position? Like, okay, well. Know? Like if it said you should be in construction? Yeah. And you'd I mean, start looking for construction jobs? Yeah. <laughs> Bob the Builder. Yeah. Yeah, if you, you know, watch do, that, you know all you need to know. Exactly, and mm -hmm. I do like um, tools. Mm -hmm. Like yep. hammers and a drill. Oh, mm -hmm. it's all set. Jack hammers. Yeah. I like tools. She bobbed on a builder. <laughs> <laughs> I like tools. I like hammers. <laughs> Did you really say that? I like hammers. <laughs> and <laughs> and camping Lord. knives. Yeah. I like drills. Drills are fun. Drills. A wrench. A wrench. Mm -hmm. The little line in the, in the star one. <laughs> She's ready, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so let's manifest that. Do it to the sound bowl. Yeah, I'm surprised you even said that though about the car crash thing because wouldn't that be putting it out into the universe? Yeah, that's how I don't really talk about it unless someone asks me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the regressionist is going to do what? Absolve you from these bad feelings? No, they're able to um, go back into your previous life and help you remember different lives mm -hmm. that you could have led, and maybe that's why you're scared of those. Hey, things. you want to time travel and <laughs> see how you died in a car accident? <laughs> Uh, no, bitch. No, I, not really. Well, um, <laughs> it's like that psychic, that radio psychic woman told me that day that um, that in the previous life, Matthew McConaughey and I were brothers in the Civil War, and we fought on different sides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I never knew that until she told me. Right. It'd be a hell of a movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I like that. She did say that, though. I yeah, no, I mean, I believe mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I did, too. Well, Alexa, she I didn't make jokes about that at all. 
mm-hmm. she might relieve you if you find out that happened in the past life and not that it's coming up. I mean, I'm not stressed about it. It's not like I'm like living my life in fear. Sure. I just have a feeling that it might happen. Mm-hmm. Yikes. So if you do get that re- regression, it's because we in a regression, and um, she says you died in a car crash in your previous life, and so I don't think it'll be happening again. So you'll you'll forget all the dreams and everything that you've had? Maybe. Yeah? Who knows? Well, how much does a regressionist cost? It's a lot of money. Is it? Yes. Uh-huh. Like how much? $300 a session. Wow. Mm-hmm. Dang to tell you something that there is absolutely no way of proving. Well, you could, they, and you just have to you just have to believe it and have faith in it. Yep. That's a great gig. <laughs> because I mean, how do you determine that person's success rate? I mean, right. It's like they're telling you what happened before you even were in your current state of being. So you can't go back and ask a family member, hey, what was I like in my past life? Why would a family? Oh, well. And like if somebody tells you something that happened when you were little, like a psychic says when you were little, you got uh, a close encounter with an alligator. And then you could go to your mom and go, mom, why didn't you tell me that I almost got eaten by an alligator when I was little? And she'd say, well, you're full of shit. And I don't know. That person that told you that doesn't know what they're talking about. But you can't go back and find somebody from your previous life and ask them if the regressionist is right. Right. I mean, yeah. Whoa. Mm-hmm. You might. Crazy, yeah, right? Nobody can confirm that you were run over by, you know, mm-hmm. Napoleon's chariot or something. Mm-hmm. That's why they say that little kids um, will remember things about previous lives and stuff because they're connected. But then as they grow older, people that are cynics uh, kill their dreams. And so they don't, they disconnect from that and they forget all their memories. Adults are so stupid. Are we the cynics? I'm not saying that. That's the way you said it. No. Because there's cynics around me who don't believe (laughs) around, (laughs) you know. Share funny from the Ace and TJ family. More, more next. When disaster strikes, you can count on the emergency damage experts at Paul Davis. Fire, flood, mold, or a storm, it doesn't matter. You can contact Paul Davis. Always devoted, always polite, always respectful of your needs. Learn more at acetj.com slash Paul Davis. Woo! Papa John's just took their fresh, never frozen dough and hand stretched it New York style. So you can fold it or not. Hang on, I know, I fold it. Get a New York style pizza from Papa John's. Hey, it's Riggins from the Ace and TJ Show reminding you that every Friday I do the Week in Review, which is sponsored by Calitrin. Learn more at acetj.com slash weight loss. Hey, it's funny you'll share. The Ace and TJ family presents the Share Funny Podcast from the Ace and TJ Show. I don't know what what animal I, I think would be the worst to be um killed by Riggins, you said the scientists say bear is the worst because it mauls you and rips you apart and everything before you die yeah i think that would be the worst that or we were talking about a crocodile Crocodile. because then you're in you're being bitten and it's taking you down so you're aware of that and it starts the death roll and then you're like "Ah, it's disorienting and terrifying yeah but Uh. the bears the bear you're you know it's happening as it's happening to you. That's yeah. the worst part to me. Yeah. Or th- remember we saw last week or a few weeks ago that video of that bull. Um, what's uh, the, what are they yeah. called? The bison? No, it was a mm-hmm. bullfighter oh, the, the or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and that looked like it would be painful because you're not going to die right away, I don't think. Or you get gored by gored, the bull. And yeah, and they keep coming at you. Yeah. See, I'm thinking uh, one of the worst for me personally would be the um, the boa constrictor or something where it's squeezing the air out of you. And every time you let an, a breath out, it squeezes you <laughs> and you can't yeah. take it. So you, they basically end up just smothering you, cutting <laughs> cutting off your, your ability to breathe. But it ha- it's happening slowly and slowly and then slowly. Gonna, to me, at least then you're going to pass out at some point. I know it's yeah, terrible. I don't know. But then your rib, you can feel your ribs and all cracking as that thing gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Yeah. Welcome to Share mm, Funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah That's wild, though. Yeah. I still, mm. I think, I still think the bear, because it seems like the bears do a lot of damage yeah. that you have to live through before you die. 
or a chimpanzee. You know, those, oh, yeah. Those oh. stories about the chimpanzees are just unreal. Because a lot of people survive it, but they're just horrific injuries. Or, you know what would be horrible? <laughs> or what? <laughs> when they put, you know, when I've seen this in movies where they put a, like a rat with a bucket on your oh, body yeah. and then they heat it up so that the rat starts like caving into your body because of the heat. Yeah. That would be a horrible way to what die. movie is that? In? Yeah. It was in Fast and Furious. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> One of the earlier ones. <laughs> when it was still real. Yeah, that's before they got stupid. <laughs> that's true, though. It, it, they, they've gotten a little crazy. It's pretty dark. Yeah, <laughs> that is extremely dark. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, to be eaten yeah. to death by rats would be would be a bad one, I think. Yeah, it would take a long time. Mm-hmm. Or the uh, what was it in Hannibal where he fed the guy to the pigs? That he mm-hmm. hadn't, fed, you know, the hogs. Oh yeah. If you do to the hogs. Or the in hogs. Game of Thrones, remember that scene with Sansa. With the dogs? With the dogs. Yeah. With Santa. <laughs> Santa. Sansa. <laughs> Sansa Stock. Sansa st- of House Stock. Queen uh, of the North. All right. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I think the best way, get bit by a poisonous spider or something, and you just die. And die, yeah, just mm. fall over. Yeah. Pretty the best, oh, you mean with that animal? Yeah. Yeah. Like something that they just immediately have to put you in a coma or something. Or something yeah, just, just rips like, your head off. Like he just bites. <laughs> like, bite. It's over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. You never even feel it. It's like, oh. Yeah. oh. Dead. I'm, yeah. I'm great. Oh, gosh. I'm dead. Yeah. Boom. Done. Exactly. Black and yellow. Good for a fellow. <laughs> I'm like, or shit is it? You got it back. Red and blue. It's good to you. I never remember. <laughs> Red and yellow kills a fellow. Red and yellow kills Red a fellow. Red and black's friend of Jack. Yeah. What are y'all talking about? Snakes? The snakes, yeah. Oh, oh they were talking about spiders. I thought red and black spiders were uh, black widows. I was like, that doesn't yeah, sound right. Yeah, they are. That's what I'm, yeah. yeah. We're talking about snake. snakes. Yeah. What's that? Is it a, uh, not a coral snake. What is it? The red and yellow kills a fellow. Red and black's friend of Jack. Who the hell Jack? Yeah. I, don't know. I, I am friends with Jack. My name ain't Jack. <laughs> and I am friends with him. Mm-mm. <laughs> Yeah, did, did I tell y'all that that, um, that black snake did strike at me the other day when I was trying to get it off my neighbor's screen porch? And you didn't, didn't kill it? No. That's, I'm impressed. No. Because if I was trying to... I just go ahead and kill it then. I was trying to scoot it on on out of, away from the house and all. Yeah. And it got under the cover of the grill, like where it comes down to the concrete. Yeah. And I was moving the stuff, the bottom of the little skirting part around so I could see if he was under there. And when I did, he kind of lunged out at me. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, see. Look at that. But I mean, I didn't blame him because I'd been messing with him trying to, you know, push him out out from behind their refrigerator and all this stuff. Yeah, but my theory on that is, I here I am trying to be cool, and yeah. I kill you, and you're gonna strike at me, mm-hmm. so now you got to die. <laughs> but I just yeah. kept because you know I'm usually just the first time I haven't been you know kill all snakes because they're terrible. Yeah. Um, because I just kept focusing on the fact that they eat rats and stuff like that, so that'd be good to have around the house sure. eating rats and all. Um, but I tell you, we drove up the other night, and um, and there was a skunk right yeah. by our mailbox. Yeah, you told us that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They eat snakes. Skunks, skunks, skunks eat do. snakes? I think so, yeah. With their little cute hands? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and their mouths. Mostly eat with their mouths. <laughs> <laughs> do skunks have cute hands? Are you thinking of raccoons? <sighs> I don't know. Or they wash the food. I mean, how else would I think they have like little cute hands too? Let's see. Skunks got claws. Like yeah, I think skunks and raccoons are pretty similar in how they're yeah. built, though, right? Yeah, they got little cute hands and they yeah. choke you. Mm-hmm. I love them. And they do handstands. How cute. Yeah, they skunks <laughs> eat eat lizards and snakes <laughs> and rats. What do you mean they do handstands? They do handstands. Look it, at that. It, cer- a certain breed does, is what it says. <laughs> They're all doing the spotted too. Okay, I thought that was. I love it. I thought that was sounding stupid at first, but no, I was wrong. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> I do like. Uh, I think skunks' colors are pretty. I like. I, I think they're cute skunks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. The little feet. But they're mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even if they can't, if somebody has removed their stink bag, they'll still tear you up. I mean, the skunk will claw you, and fight you. <laughs> the phrase stink bag makes me laugh. <laughs> you need to remove yeah. your stink bag. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish somebody happens removed all the time. my stink bag. Yeah, your stink pouch is gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
stink sack. <laughs> Got to do something about yeah. my stink bag. <laughs> they do people sack. like the um, doctors, veterinarians. They'll take out a take out a skunk stink sack, and then you you know you can have them in zoos and have them as pets and stuff. Hmm. Evidently, it must not be that hard to get it out of there. The glands. That's gross. Your stink glands. Mm-hmm. You. But but what I'm saying is, even if you have that, they're not you know they're not great pets because they can be mean and yeah. fast and just rip your face off. You know what makes great pets? Dogs. Animals that are pets, mm-hmm. like dogs. Yeah, cats, but they weren't pets at one point. Fish. Well, they are now. <laughs> so, so we can like, make more things pets. No, no. We pretty much need to. No, we have dogs, cats, fish. You know, horses. Let's work on raccoons. They're, they're let's, cute. Let's work on leaving them alone. And I also want seals for pets because okay. I and fox. I okay. want to add that to the list. Mm. I love fox. Foxes. You want a coyote too? No, th- those aren't as cute. Well, that, see, that's and there's, therein lies the problem. We've established what are pets. Let's just go with them. <laughs> Dogs, cats, fish, horses. <laughs> those are the pets. Fish, horse. Done. Birds, like a par- parakeet. All right, some birds in a cage. I'll even, I'll even spot you a uh, snake. What about ferrets? Mm-hmm. Would well, they're birds? Ferret is no, not a bird. Ferret's not a bird. I'm sorry. I, I thought you said parrot. My bad. I thought you said parrot at first. Birds are birds. <laughs> sorry. Oh, I, thought you said, I, I don't think you should be the one to pick what is a pet. Yeah, what is I think it? I should. That's why. I thought you said parrot, not ferret. Ferrets are oh. birds. It's a bird. <laughs> not bad. I thought birds. a bird is juicy growing up. <laughs> I apologize. I thought you said parrot, not ferret. This guy wants to be president. (laughs) Hey, missed any part of Share Funny? Subscribe to the podcast on all major podcast platforms. More Share Funny coming up. If you want to sleep better and lose weight, then the product that you need is called Calitrin, or you can pronounce it Calitrin. Very easy for you to get. Just go to acetj.com slash weight loss. acetj.com slash weight loss for Calitrin. When disaster strikes, you can count on the emergency damage experts at Paul Davis. Fire, flood, mold, or a storm, it doesn't matter. You can contact Paul Davis. Always devoted, always polite, always respectful of your needs. Learn more at acetj.com slash Paul Davis. Share Funny has its own Facebook group. To join, search Share Funny and get more. Now more Share Funny from the Ace and TJ family. More people are sending in there. Here's how I think I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> They've had re- other people have had recurring dreams about the car crash, also, Alexis. Which yeah. Is oh, here's one that says, "I have a recurring dream that I'm sitting in my living room watching television, and a car comes crashing into my living room. I don't die, but then I'm left with the mess of my house, looking." Like it needs to be repaired and restored. So I call Paul Davis Restoration, the sponsor of Share Funny. Nice. So we back the car out of there, and Paul Davis's emergency technicians get to work, putting that living room back exactly the way it was before Alexis crashed through it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm putting that on me. (laughs) Like, uh uh-oh. Alexis went through somebody's neighborhood. Something's got to be repaired after that. So when you uh, when you get in touch with Paul Davis Restoration, that's what they do. They say, hey, what's the situation? We'll be right there. We'll get it done, get it assessed and taken care of. And if you, um, you want to get uh, Paul Davis um, booked to come over, all you got to do is go to acetj.com slash Paul Davis. AceTJ.com slash Paul Davis. Um, they know that you're ready to get your life back the way it was, and they'll, they'll get you that way as soon as they possibly can, as quickly as they can. Does Paul love it? Paul love it. Um, so people are now saying that they're going to, how they're going to die? No, they just, a couple of other people have mentioned in DMs that uh, they've had mm-hmm. the same recurring dream that Alexis has had. Um, 
One lady said, Alexis, I'm the same way. Recurring dream since I was little that I would die at, at age 32 in a car accident. I'm 47. <laughs> so she said, like, live it on borrowed time. And it's, it's a smiley face. It's, you know, clearly that dream did not, uh, did not come true. That's a nightmare. Yeah. But your dreams tell you how old you're going to be, Alexis? Or you just, that's what you're just gathering from yeah. all of that? Just gathering, taking a guess. Now, when you go to find out what you did in a previous life and all that, when you find the regressionist, is that regressionist local or is that going to have to come from some, you know, like India or somewhere with a shaman or some some kind of deal like that? No, they have some locally. Oh. I'm a regressionist. <laughs> I deal with uh, supernatural <laughs> dreams. And do you go to their house for this thing, or do they have offices? I know you haven't researched it no. very much. I sure. just know it's expensive, so I'm yeah. like, mm. <laughs> they do they have offices. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's, oh, there's one right. There's a regressionist right around the corner. There's centers. Oh, in in Mooresville, mm -hmm. North Carolina. Yeah. There's a regressionist. Yeah, not far from. Oh, here. there's a lot of stuff up here in Mooresville. Mm. What do they say? What did it say, Ace? What would they do for you? Uh, I don't know. I just, I just looked up the, the regressionists <laughs> near me, and that's what it says. Let me go to their, real good. Let me go to their website. They do lots of other things as well. They have to touch hey, on you and stuff? I don't want to say the name of the place, but... Uh, have you ever seen a session online, Alexis, of what a regressionist does? No, but I know that they like put you under hypnosis. Oh, yeah, that's what it says. Mm -hmm. Regression hypnotherapy sessions, ab ab among other things, uh, you go on a guided journey through a safe and relaxing regression hypnosis to access all the magic of the unconscious mind and spiritual realms. You can choose from one or more of the following experiences to simply come to re or simply come to receive whatever gift spirit has to offer. For example, you can choose from these things. Um, Experience life between lives. Experience. What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, I haven't clicked on it yet. Uh, experience a past life memory. Meet guides, angels, counsels, and or your higher self. Uh, imprint or overlay soul memories. Uh, reconnect with loved ones on the other side. I may mention that. Or experience a future life progression. Uh, life between lives. Have you ever wondered why you are here? Where you came from? What happens when you die? This session will provide the opportunity for you to explore the fact that you are an amazing, immortal being of light who is always surrounded by love. Do you want me to tell you what happens yeah. in between? Okay, so basically what happens is you <clears throat> die and your soul just goes somewhere to like kind of download all of the lessons that you learned in this life that you just lived mm -hmm. and all the things that you want to learn in your next life. Um, and you kind of have to just like you know, process everything that you went through. Yeah. So you're so just it's, kind of like in this just. So it's, it's, um, reincarnation. No, because, because you're not, a, you're not a human again. You're like in this space of nothingness while you process everything okay. that you went through. And then so what your happens soul, you... when you die, your soul doesn't go to heaven or hell. It just That's... waits around until things are done downloading and then de determining what you're about to be now. Yeah, what your next life is going to be. Oh. Mm -hmm. so, so how many lives do we get? There's tons. Huh. So, so then there's heaven... Some, there's, so there's people that are young souls and there's people that are old souls because the old souls have been here mm. many times before. Okay, so then heaven and hell are not even things then. I mean, I, I don't... If I your don't... soul waits until it just finds another life, it doesn't go to heaven or hell. That's, I mean, I was taught heaven and hell is not real, so. Mm. Okay. Well, that's a foreign so, concept. So that's where you come, that's where you come to be as an animal or something like that in another life. I don't think right? we come back as. But as, you say you won't be human. No, like when you're waiting to come oh, back. Oh, you're waiting to you're come back. You're not a human, okay. you're just a spirit. All right. And so, that's what Jehovah's Witnesses believe? No. No. But well, then you say you were raised to believe there wasn't hell in, in heaven. Yeah, they don't. They don't teach that. They they say that that's, that's right because it's only a hundred and so many thousand people make it to the paradise or whatever no, it is. No, they say the paradise is going to be turned into, or the earth is going to yeah, be turned into right. a paradise for a hundred and how many thousand or what it that's is. That's different. Oh, but yeah, that's something else. We don't even want to get into that. Okay, but there is that hundred and forty-four thousand is a number. Right. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
But none of this other stuff was is from your Jehovah's no. Witness teachings. Not at all. All the all of the you know the universe and moon and stars and coming back as a you know as a moo cow or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do I look like a moo cow? Yeah. Let me ask you a question, TJ. Have you ever wondered if you have assistance or guidance from the other side? Yeah, those are my spirit guides. Yeah. Would you like to develop a more personal relationship with your guides and or angels what's the other side what does that mean the other people who have who have died i'm just reading reading what's the other side cosmic side the spiritual side uh would Uh, you like to know if you're on the right path this session where you meet guides angels counsel and or your higher self this session provides you the opportunity for you to build a stronger connection to all of those i'm sorry to all those who support you on the other side Mm -hmm. okay and um and these are different from psychics these people Right. It seems so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause they're not looking, they're not, I think so. I'm not, this really is sure. more like that, uh, John Edward, not, not the, the disgraced Senator and vice presidential yeah. candidate, but the guy who would, who would, what was his show he had or his books yeah, crossing just, over. Oh, I've read yeah. his books before. Yeah. Yeah. And then he got, Kind of ousted from. I'm not sure what happened to him. The, the culture or something. I don't know. But anyway, that's. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's literally. I'm gonna go down there. That's right you down say the road. It's right here. Yeah. Which we're, we're close to what? Uh, I can tell you exactly how far mm-hmm. it is from here. I don't. It's, I'll it's go next down to there. like a salsa or Yeah. Like, and they no, do no. all changes in the back. <laughs> Come on. This shit ain't real. <laughs> we next to a Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> how you gonna tell me anything <laughs> about the afterlife? <laughs> Oh. Hang out to yeah. you exactly. Let me. I'm gonna Google Map it. Yeah, who knows? It could be real. They got Merc shakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just need y'all to tell me um, when I'm gonna get that check. When am I gonna hit the lottery? Oh, That's what across, I want to know. Yeah. It's across the street. It's a three minute drive across the street, right here by the Goodwill. Oh, okay. All right. I might need to check this place out. Yeah. I'm not lying. No, I looked it up. Across the street, hang mm-hmm. right. It's I'm about right to email there. her. Yeah, you're you're less than three <laughs> minutes away <laughs> from paradise. Mm-hmm. That's what none of that. Post life and current yeah. life paradise. That makes I don't. That makes me nervous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you nervous about? I don't know. That just feels like it's against the Bible somehow. Yeah. I don't know how specifically, but I don't know. <laughs> Messing yeah. around with afterlife reincarnations and mm-hmm. some some person that. Who are they? I don't know. I just feel like I don't know. No, anything of about course. It. Yeah, yeah, I get it. They got a bunch of snake charming going on in there. No, man. It's next to a Goodwill behind a Sunday's barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> no, <man. laughs> I don't believe it. It's in a very nice area over here, though. Yeah, it really I mean, is. Come yeah. On. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just want the lottery numbers. That's all I want. <laughs> That's all I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. This is the Share Funny Podcast from the Ace and TJ family. More next. One of the main things that we can do to make our homes stay comfortable is to make sure that there are no pests in the home. And the best way to do that is with our friends at Cardinal Environmental Solutions. Now, Cardinal Environmental Solutions has over 25 years of experience in the pest control industry. And the thing about it is, is that they are from this area. They serve the uh, entire greater Charlotte area, and they grew up here in Charlotte. They raise their families here in Charlotte. They understand the climate, the soil types, all of the various pests that invade our homes, uh, and they even deal with the bad mosquitoes that we have. So if you need someone to take care and make sure that your house is bug-free and rodent-free, then you need Cardinal Environmental Solutions. They're very easy to find. Just go to acetj.com slash cardinal, acetj.com slash cardinal, and start living pest-free today with Cardinal. If you want to sleep better and lose weight, then the product that you need is called Calitrin, or you can pronounce it Calitrin. Very easy for you to get. Just go to acetj.com slash weight loss. acetj.com slash weight loss for Calitrin. This is the Share Funny Podcast from the Ace and TJ family. Let's go! (laughs) 
What you what you eating? Uh, these are breast, breakfast biscuits. They're blueberry. Oh, it's got fiber. Oh, in biscuits them. like English biscuits, not not Southern U.S. biscuits. That's what they're like. The they're like old dry ass cookies. Yeah, like old dry ass cookies. Are they not good? No, Open they're here. good. It's you know it's full of fiber. Mm-hmm. That's I get my fiber in. All right. I thought you had a problem the other way, where you like you got the uh, effects of too much fiber. Sometimes I just, like I just, just don't. just running to the to the bathroom. Damn. So what? One day you got too much fiber. <laughs> one day you got not enough. Listen, let me tell you, it's exhausting. Like a stop, start, stop, start. <laughs> Can I just get a happy, healthy medium, please? Hmm. You have to get rid of cheese in your life, and I don't think you're doing that. Nope. I'd rather die. Yeah, because you, you you do still use dairy products when you know it messes you up. Yep. <laughs> I do. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there's there's Rob's right. There mm-hmm. is a solution. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yesterday I had these breakfast tacos with cheese sauce on them and mm-hmm. chorizo. Ooh. Oh, it was so good. Scrambled eggs. It was amazing. With what? Chorizo. 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 There's, mm-hmm. a, um, <clears throat> there's a place, a barbecue place. Close to my, right down the road from my friend's house in Houston that we go to every Saturday morning for breakfast. And they make, I don't know what the number is, but they're known like they make, say, a thousand breakfast tacos. That's it. They make what they make Mm -hmm. every morning. And they are amazing. And they've got all these different sauces that they make. They're in the store. And you'll get like, um, uh, like one was a brisket uh, you can get brisket with or without jalapenos, uh, egg and brisket, and all this kind, mm. all these different combinations: mm. sausage, egg, and sausage, egg, and cheese, and all this kind of stuff. They're phenomenal, but it's cool. It's like there are five hundred made every day. Get it? They, they always sell out, but they're packed when you go in there. They they go on it. They, they open the door at six. They're there, and they're there until they're gone, mm. and they last like about an hour and a half or so, two hours, and they're gone. Mm-hmm. I always hated the phrase "when they're gone, they're gone." Yeah, because obviously, does. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. when they're gone, they're gone. Okay. Oh, really? When they're gone, we have 500 left. <laughs> we got a few more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. Sometimes, like, hey, those are gone. But now we've got these others that we weren't going to sell, but now we are. They're kind of like the obstructed view yeah, seats. Right. But then I know not to trust them. So <laughs> they lied. Dirty, rotten liars. We look hard barbecue. Enough. Who lies about barbecue? Only a sadist. <laughs> if we look hard enough, we can always find more. Did you make those, Alexis? No. You didn't? Mm-mm. I was, uh, I was at a, working at an event yesterday, and they had them there, and they were oh, so nice. good. How many did you have? I had three. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. Oh, they were delicious. Really? Yeah. On a flour tortilla. Is pretty mm-hmm. good. And number three is what you take after you eat this. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a number four or two. Uh-uh. It's a number three. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, <laughs> it's like a really bad number two. Yeah. <laughs> I had a uh, for for Leonard last night. It was a late lunch, and I go to bed early on Sunday, so it was Leonard. Uh, I had a beef burrito, beef and bean burrito with refried beans in it. And uh, red sauce and queso over the top of it, uh, cheese dip mm-hmm. on the top. Cool. And then I had uh, for my side, I had a tamale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I had something yeah. Friday night, mm-hmm. TJ, that mm-hmm. I, I have not had in years. It's been it's been a, a couple years at six. least. Uh, what? No, it wasn't <laughs> blowed up. Wasn't six. <laughs> but uh, we went to uh, one of my daughters' old favorite restaurants and i had salt and pepper catfish yeah oh good oh my god it was so good i haven't had catfish in forever it was it was Mm -hmm. fantastic did you get sides and stuff um what did i have as a side coleslaw and we had hush puppies puppies. and then uh really really cold uh draft beer Mm. like middle light with the Ice cold mm-hmm. bug. It was fantastic. Yeah. That'd be good. And then I went home and went right to bed. <laughs> I was so mm-hmm. tired and just full. And you know, one of those like, let's watch some TV. And next thing yeah. you know, you're waking up, cutting it off. 
You know, Louisiana people, though, like when we first moved here and they started talking about salt and pepper catfish, I was like, what is that? What are you talking about? And they told us, and we're like, wait a minute. Those are the only two seasonings you right. put on your fish, salt and pepper? I mean, are you using an easy bake oven or something? I mean, that's just <laughs> so amateurish. <laughs> it's like, we're rolling ours in mustard and putting cayenne on it and all that stuff. I still turn my nose up at salt and pepper catfish. It was good. Ugh. No, I don't. I'm just kidding. I'm not a snob. <laughs> not in the least. Not like Ace is. Yeah. Turned around on you real quick, didn't it? Mm. did. I'm not really sure how that happened. Well, I mean, you got to have a certain brand of wash tub to build a fire in your driveway with. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing else will do. That's a claw-footed bathtub. <laughs> Hey, my driveway is yeah. very, very short in the townhouse. It's yeah. like mm -hmm. four feet. It's short. <laughs> it's four feet of driveway right into the garage. Mm. Uh, Got to keep it away from the house. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> someday, though. Someday. Yeah. Golly, boy, I got pissed off. Sorry. I got upset yesterday because I came home, and it, I don't know where all these cars came from. But I had to park down the streets. Couldn't park in front of my own place because there were so many people parked out in front. And I was I was in a bad mood. I was mad. Damn, one day I'm gonna have a house again with a garage that I can that two cars can park in. Because you know, obviously Amanda gets to park in there. I know. Ooh. But she parks her car in the garage. I want her parking in the garage. But still it's like, damn, I gotta park. Wait a minute. I'm fifty four years old. I gotta park in a damn mm -hmm. down the street. Cause I ain't got a house that's got two car garage. Yeah, you might as well just park here. Yeah. And walk across the street to where you live. It wouldn't have been that much farther. Mm -hmm. uh, so we went to a movie yesterday. We went and saw Elvis. And um, I don't know. I, I don't I know. I, I liked it for the most part. There were a few things in there that I thought it was kind of being too hip for the room. The way it was edited and some of the some of the way it went. But. Um, I think it portrayed the people of Louisiana pretty pretty well. Ace, really, when they you know showed him in his first appearances at the Louisiana Hayride and all that. Did are you are you being facetious? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there were there were a couple of guys in the crowd that yelled out, you know, get a haircut, and then somebody else yelled out at him a a, um, a gay slur, I think. But I'm sure that happened. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that happened. Well, I, I didn't know this. I just looked this up. Uh, that movie just made over the weekend, it surpassed $100 million at the box yeah. office in America. It's made over $170 right. million worldwide. Yeah. And that's, uh, wow. that was our contribution. 100. Yeah. Pushed it over $100 million. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Said it cost about $85 million to make. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It was good. It was good. But I can't, it was, you know, a big deal about Boz Lerman was the director and all of that. Yeah. And I, I can't ever see or hear anything about Boz Lerman without thinking about Wear Sunscreen, yeah. that, that song that he did yeah. that time. I love that song. It's hardly a song. Hey, whatever. It I like love an, it. Whatever it is. It's great. Yeah. And was it a graduation speech sunscreen. that he put together and then yeah. they like added that. music to it? Mm-hmm. It wasn't uh, as good as Vitamin C's The Graduation Song. I was going to say, those two go hand in hand with me. Vitamin C's The Graduation Song. Well, we talked all night. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Yeah. Was I, that your graduation song, Alex? Or was that before you graduated? I don't really remember. You don't? I think that was before I graduated. Okay. And I also graduated from homeschool, so there was no song. Yeah. <laughs> well, that just took a sad turn at the end there, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was pretty, uh, you graduated pretty from, silent. You graduated from homey school. <laughs> <laughs> you were a homegirl graduate. I'm a homegirl. I'm a homegirl. <laughs> What's the matter, Pac-Man? It's because I'm a homegirl. So there's no cere there's no ceremony or anything you just got your diploma showed up in the mail one day and you're like oh i guess i passed yep did, did the family be like ah let's yeah we dinner. had a party okay yeah i had a huge party that's mm -hmm. good yeah but what i graduated you, okay. early from high school i graduated yeah. like seven months early oh, good you deserve some kind of you know what does your diploma say is this the same as a high school diploma I mean, the high like, school was in uh 
Pennsylvania. So it just has the name of the school. Oh, okay. okay. So you followed their curriculum. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your mom was your teacher or you learned it on your own? You are your she, own teacher. She was not about to be sitting there trying to teach me things. I did it all myself. Online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's not Man. that type. I bet you still, though, even though you were homeschooled, doing it all by yourself, I bet you still got suspended a couple of times, didn't you? <laughs> I suspended myself. <laughs> suspended yourself. Put yourself in detention. <laughs> the Share Funny Podcast is a production of the Ace and TJ family. To get more Ace and TJ 24-7, download the Ace and TJ app. Just search for Ace and TJ in your app store. All share funny material, copyright ATJ Incorporated 2021.